Hey guys, so Blizzard announced the patch 30.6, which is going to be the mid-season updates. Um, wanted to use this as a video to go through, review all the trinkets, and give some, I guess, predictions for what I think is going to be good, bad, um, and potentially like meta-defining. Um, obviously, I take this all with a grain of salt doing this. You know, day it's announced, so there hasn't been too much theory crafting around. Um, but be, I guess, a starting point. Alright, so first one is Deathly Ter uh, Phylactery. Uh, discover a Death Rattle minion. Your first Death Rattle each combat triggers an extra time. Um, turn 6, you're probably going to be on Tavern Tier 3, so discovering a Death Rattle honestly is pretty bad. Um, definitely the your first Death Rattle each combat triggers an extra time is potentially useful in the Catacomb Crasher comp. Um, just because you really only play like one or two death rattles in that um, comp. I can see this being good in that, and that's really about it. Um, I don't see it being super meta-defining um, outside of that comp. I can't think of, like, the only other usage I can think is potentially getting more, like, magnetics off the scrapper death rattle. Um, so yeah, that's about it. Uh, goose portrait. Get a silver goose. After you summon five silver fletchings, get a goldenizer. I wonder, I'm assuming they're still keeping goldenizer trinket. Um, the real. I'm assuming also. For it to kill five fletchings, you kind of figured that it has. I'm assuming this runs over from turn to turn. If it doesn't, then my analysis is going to be just completely screwed. If it doesn't roll over, I'm pretty sure it's absolutely trash. Um, now, with it, where it is, if you do some type of, like, ping beast build with, like, the whole, like, summon stuff, you can easily get, like, five gooses to die a turn and then just use this to make your board golden and then get rid of the goose. Um, however, if I remember, they're getting rid of leapers, so I don't know how good beasts are actually going to be. Um... I don't think beasts are going to be that strong without leapers, just because like the whole all the other, um, the four and five drop like deal damage to your beast comp just isn't really strong enough to compete with most of the comps right now. Um, however, this could be a good way to settle it in that it might be able to just like this is kind of like the tabby cat replacement I think for beast is kind of kind of what I'm thinking. It's about that power level. All right. Electromagnetic device, two gold. Discover a magnetic minion. Whenever you magnetize a minion, give it two two. Um, the only thing that this is good for, in my opinion, is that it's like getting a magnetic for two gold, which is technically positive. Um, I don't see this being like game changing for magnetics. Like two two isn't really that good. Like, it's not defining for like early. Just because two two isn't that much, and then even if you do like giant stacks, like you're already big enough where you don't like two two over maybe thirty magnetics, sixty sixty at that point, like you're getting one one just off of the magnetics for the end of turn effect. So I don't see this being game changing. It might be like the best of a worst trinket kind of thing. You might take it for free and try to get like the Cordatron and just like econ out, but I don't see this being like you don't even really want to go this in. The magnetic builds. Fungal Mancer sticker. After you sell five minions, get a random Murloc. Five left. So this is kind of like Lava Lamp, but for Murlocs. Lava Lamp hasn't been doing too too bad. Um, after they changed it from five or from four to five minions, it definitely got worse. Um, the difference is getting Murlocs is probably a little bit better. Um, for late game scan, I think this is the kind of thing that you kind of only take if you are in like an econ lobby. So if you have like elementals and murlocs in, it's good. I, I'm assuming you can only get it in murloc lobbies. But uh, if you have elementals in, I think it's pickable. Other than that, it's kind of you're not going to get your value out of it. Um, however, like late game, that's a really strong effect for still going infinite with a uh, brand. Um, I see this being a trinket, like, if you're ahead, it's good. If you're not, it's probably bad. Magnetic, or Marine Signet. After you play four minions, get a random tier one tavern spell and upgrade this. I'm assuming upgrade this is 
upgrading the tier to six and then it stays at six. So after you play four minions, get a random, essentially a tavern spell. Um, so if we just think about like the tempo of lobbies, you know what? Actually, what I think is kind of interesting with this is I wonder if you like just get to five and then try to go infinite because five tier. F well, no, because it always upgrades, right? That's kind of weird because like. Unless they change spells around, like, I'd rather have Tavern Tier 5 than 6 spells, but eventually if you go infinite, like, it's only a getting 6, Tier 6 spells. Um, and Tier 6 spells, honestly, like, aren't, aren't that great. Um, so, I don't see it being that good. Um, also, like, if you're just thinking about, like, how many minions to play, you really are normally playing, like, 2-3 minions a turn until the late game. So once it gets to the point where it's giving you value, like you are either already dead or going infinite. Um, so really in that that sense, it's kind of just like a win more. It doesn't like give you the ability to stabilize, which I don't like. I think stabilizing trinkets are really strong. Stuff like this that just is like win more generally is going to be bad. Uh, Bleeding Heart, Avenge 6, get a random undead. I see this being pretty good in... Uh, undead comps. Uh, the issue with undead comps is you actually like play a bunch of pairs that you don't want to gold in, because um, you're doing like attack buff stuff. Um, however, this I could see at being a good stabilize. You figure like you're probably going to be getting like one to two undead to turn, and at that point, like it's comp, it's essentially a compass that costs a little bit more, with the condition that you can potentially get more. Um, undeads so i think this is an okay one to take again it's not like meta defining or anything like that uh ticket discover uh sticker interesting discover a tier three dark moon prize at the start of every turn repeat this let me look up um dark okay so i'm assuming these are the ones that you're getting as an option which these are actually like really good if this is what you get Because this is the tier 1, this is the tier 2, this is the tier 3. So, make a random minion, the golden's really good. Fill your hands with bananas is good. Divine shield is good. Steal all minions and refresh is good. Return a non-friendly golden to your hand. Give it 2-2 two, two is meh. Discover a tier 6 is broken on tier 6. And then discover a new hero power. Being able to save that is also like broken. So, unless I'm looking at the wrong tier... I feel like these are the ones they actually are planning on giving you. Because these, I feel like, are broken. Let's double check. No, it says tier 3. Those are the tier 3 ones. So, I feel like this is actually broken. Like, especially, like, because it's Discover, like, you can essentially guarantee you get top shelf, right? Which means this is essentially the one, like, globe... Uh, trinket already, but instead of every two, it's every three, but you get one now, so it gives you a little bit more stabilization. You know what, actually, that makes me think I'm actually looking at the right tier. If you compare it to Globe, it's about on par with Globe. It's a little bit worse because it's every three turns, but you get one now, and getting it on turn six versus turn eight is actually insane. Because Globe, like, they go on turn 12, they become even, and then after turn 12, Globe is better, but, like, Games normally don't go past turn, like, maybe 14 or 15. So you might lose one tier 6, but at that point, like, your board's already set that, like, another tier 6 doesn't actually matter. So I, I can see Ticket of Sticker being good. Reflect the Pendant or Gold. Get a plain copy of a minion you control at the start of each turn. Repeat this. Get a plain... So I'm assuming it's a random minion. Um, which makes it a lot worse, right? If you had, like, the ability to discover it and, like, get a triple that way, it would be really good. You figure every turn it's essentially giving you three gold. So I see this being, like, an okay neutral one to take, and potentially um, you can do this if you're playing some type of combo board where, um, like, you want to triple a lot of minions. Like, I'm thinking Catacomb Crasher with this. Like, you end up playing, like, four pairs, with this and like you then get a golden titus really easy you get a golden catacomb crusher really easily you get golden mccall's really easily um that's where i see this probably being the um the best way um 
Bartendotron's oil can. At the start of your turn, reduce the cost of upgrading the tavern by three. And it costs two, so you already get your value back on like one turn in terms of gold. I feel like this is broken. Um, so where it becomes a little bit weird is you probably delay going up, but you can use this to just solidify your board a lot quicker um, by like sitting on three and four, maybe an extra turn or two. Um, because, or you just get more minions on those tavern tiers, and then you probably skip five and aggressively go to six. Or you skip four and aggressively go to five. Something like that. Um, but I think this one's... This feels like another one where, like, it's kind of broken. Unless... Because, like, you're getting three gold every turn, right? That's broken. <laughs> I guess it's three gold every turn until you get to Tavern Tier 6. Um, so, let's just do some rough math. Let's say you upgrade for free every turn, every time. Then you wait two turns to go to four, and then let's just say three for five, three for six. So that's six, seven, eight turns. So that says, like, the game goes... So yeah, you should be getting... I feel like this is actually broken, um, but we'll see. I feel like I'm thinking about it wrong somehow. But that, that feels really broken to me. At the start of your turn, get a plain copy of the highest tier minion in your opponent's warband. At the start of your turn, get a copy of the highest tier minion in your oh, in your last opponent's warband. This seems decent. So you don't get tempo the first turn. However, this is also something you can do where you... I feel like this is okay. This is probably a good one to take, like, if you don't get a broken, like, directional one, where you're probably fine taking this. You can potentially steal, like, a 4-drop or 5-drop early from someone and use that to stabilize. Um, also, because you get the start of turn, you don't get value on turn 6, but you do get it on, like, starting the next turn, and you get to play... I mean, I feel like this is fair. It doesn't seem broken. It seems fair. Mystery Cube. Choose from two lesser trinkets to replace this for free. At the start of each turn, repeat this. New in this case just means the current trinket as opposed to thinking of these mid-season trinkets as a separate pool of new trinkets. Gotcha. So yeah, you just get two new trinkets every turn. Or you get to pick a new trinket every turn. Um, I wonder how this works with a bunch of the like... Like, are there some where you just don't get the value at all, like Claw? Like, when does it actually change? Um, like, a bunch of these are start of the turn, and unless I'm misunderstanding, like, I think you just don't get value that way sometimes, or it's random. Um, I feel like this is bad, honestly. Um, Alright, so duos only. We're skipping duos. I don't know duos. Ask someone that does know duos. Alright, new greater trinkets. Every fourth card you buy costs health instead of gold. Six, I feel like six is really expensive for this. Um, every fourth card. So where this becomes kind of strong is you can use this to get like the five and six cost tavern tier spells for cheaper. Um, because whenever it says like cost health instead of gold, it actually means free because you're playing, you know, rewinder. Um, so this seems good if you're... Like, you only pick this if you're playing demons. And if you're playing demons, like, it's not game-breaking, but it's probably, like, a nice-to-have. You can kind of use this to... So you get this on turn 9, so you're at 10 gold. The issue I see with it is you can't really proc it until this turn 10, right? Unless you have enough econ already saved up. But, you know, it seems fair to bad, in my opinion. Um, promo, port promo portrait. Get a prize promo drink. Your first start of combat, each co uh, combat triggers an extra time. Uh, so, 
it seems good. Um, it is kind of nice to have a start of effect, extra time effect, because that's something that's been missing from the game. Like they have Bran for battle cries, they have Titus for death rattles, they have Drakari for end of turn. So this is your way to get start of combat. Um, I don't see it being like. The issue is, like, you're comparing this to the other Dragon Greater Trinkets. It's like, would you rather have this or, like, Keychain? And, like, Keychain is significantly better than this, in my opinion. Um, So I find, see it hard to compete with that. And, like, if you're going against Keychain, like, what I would rather them see them do is do something like a, um, like, a prize protodrake type trinket where it gives you a prize or not promo uh poet trinket um where it gives you a poet trinket because i think the biggest thing right now is you play dragons and like you just don't find poet and you're kind of like stuck from there um so i don't see it being great i feel like if you take this like you would just rather have better trinkets in my opinion uh surprise portrait get an elemental of surprise more up here when you least expect them I'm a. So I hate when they do stuff like this. Like, what does that actually mean? I'm assuming what this means is there's like, probably something like a 50/50 chance that you get one on your turn. Probably not even a 50/50. It's probably like a 25-ish percent turn. Um, but I see this being really good. Something I find a lot of the times with elementals is like you take every elemental of surprise you can find. Um, and just because like. It, it's so good so i see this being a really good addition to the like apm elemental pirates build um it's hard to see how this is ever bad like you're getting an element a surprise elemental too like as tempo one turn nine you probably have a pair of elementals if you're picking this so you're getting a six drop discover off the bat on a divine shield elemental uh mecha jaraxxus sticker get two random magnetic mecha demons at the start of each turn, get two more. Seems decent. Um, mecha Dracta sticker. Get two random magnetic mecha demons. At the start of each turn, get two more. So it's essentially like playing the Jaraxxus every turn with a, with a regular brand. Seems fair like so it's essentially i guess the way to think of it so something that makes like the current magnetic greater trinket the um what is it like the fridge magnet really strong is that it's a small pool of magnetics that you can actually get from it so it makes it really likely that you get triples now the difference between that and fridge magnet is like if you're playing fridge magnet you have a bunch of like the reborn uh minions and you're ending up getting like four or five magnetics a turn where this it has a set amount of two so in what i'm thinking is like why would you take this over fridge magnet right and i'm right now i'm not seeing it i guess there's potentially playing it in demons to get like two more demon consumes with urzul but that just doesn't seem good enough to me so I'd say that this is like you take if you're super desperate, but it seems bad. Uh, primal Fin Portrait. Get a Primal Fin Lookout. After you discover a minion, get a random tavern spell. I'm assuming this procs twice or Bran. Getting a Primal Fin Lookout is really good. Um, just on its own. It's for like if you have a Bran in your shop and you see this, like you can transition them into Murlocs really easily. Um, and this just gives you a lot of value in the late game um like it makes you go infinite even more um so it's hard to see how this is bad after you play a non naga minion get a random spellcraft spell this seems so troll how is this ever good this just seems bad <laughs> all right precious pearl spellcraft give a minion plus 30 plus 30 until next turn um Seems okay. It's like it's a decent tempo trinket at least, but I don't know what more it does for you. 
I guess, like, on the guy that doubles stats, like, it's decent. Because it's actually a 60-60 buff that way. But, like, in the late game, that doesn't do much. You know, I guess what this does do, that, like, if you take this as your greater trinket instead of something like, um, the current, uh, like, Zesty's Deep Blue... Like, why would you play this over Zesty Deep Blue? Like, you can't play this in Zesty Deep Blue. It just seems bad. So, and, like, if you're doing the... Like, you're giving up your a Mutinous Trinket for this, so you can't even get, like, Mutinous as you're consuming. Like, without the, like, Shellemental stuff in the game, like, I don't see this being playable. Flagbearer Portrait. Get a Sky Pirate Flag Bearer. Your sp Sky Pirates have... Are Sky Pirates the summon? Okay, yeah, so Sky Pirate Flag Bearer. Yeah, so Sky Pirates the summon off of this guy. Um, this seems really good. It seems like a really good way to stabilize for pirates. Like I think this is better than the attack the one that like whenever your guys attack, you get a gold. Just because, like, the gold doesn't really matter, and it's like, once you have this comp set up, like, it seems like a good way to stabilize with that trink with that comp. I think that makes this comp actually decent, and have a good good way to stabilize. Uh, get a hot air surveyor. At the start of each turn, get three blood gems. So you're getting six blood gems of value from it. Seems okay. If you already have buffed, like, this is the kind of thing, like, if you already have buffed um, gems, like, you probably take this more for the three blood gems every turn. Like, the hot surveyor, you might keep around for, like, three, four turns, just to, like, kind of help stabilize. But, I think the big, also, like, if you get the three gems on the turn that you discover this, this seems really good. Assuming, like, you'd only take this if you already have buff gems, right? Like, you're already playing into it. If you're, like, you never take this on its own. But it seems okay. Uh, faceless manipulator for or manipulator portrait one gold get a faceless manipulator. So essentially, it's a one gold to try to triple something, right? It's probably okay to take. That it's like one gold get like a big beatboxer or something like. Well, no, because like. I'm pretty sure you have to use this to, like, triple, find a six, and play from there. Unless you already have, like, a big cleave or something. Then you just copy a big cleave and play two big cleaves. That seems okay, though. It seems fair, like, if you whiff on your other trinkets. Um, Nala portrait, or Redeemer portrait. Get a Nala the Redeemer and Tavern spells cost one less. It seems okay if you're already playing into Menagerie. Like, it seems like a good way to potentially, like, if you don't have a comp already, play this comp and then work your way into Scam. So, this seems okay ish. Uh, duos, 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 duos. New minions. Interesting. Alright, a tier 5 beast, Karmic Chameleon. Avenge five. Transform into a a copy of the minion to the left of this. Is this ever good? Like, what is the synergy with this? Like, are, are you transforming into like just the, the like where I see this going? Like, if I listen to Death Rattle Beast comp, like, all right, so where it actually gets value is you make it turn into a goose, and because it's turning into the goose, you get more goose frocks. And it turns into the gold. You can make it golden. And when you tr get it golden, it just does the same exact thing. <laughs> like, the text is the same, right? Transform into a copy of the minion to the left of this. Transform into a copy of the minion. Like, I just don't see how this is ever good. And it's not even, like, good stats. Like, what is the synergy I'm missing with this? Like, it turns into just, like, a really big thing. But, like, why didn't, wouldn't you just play a summoning thing that, like, also turns into a big thing? I don't know. I, I don't see it. Uh, Arch Archibon. Tier 4 Demon. 
four or five. After your hero takes damage, rewind it and reduce the cost of your next. This is actually, whoa, wait, this is actually insane, right? It's essentially another rewinder for the times like you can't just like the biggest thing with demons is like you just don't find rewinder and you just can't play the comp. Uh, four mana, four or five, or four tier four or four or five. So it's a little bit worse than. It's like slightly below average if you golden into it and like try to stabilize. But reducing the cost of your next tavern spell by one seems decent. Like you figure if you're playing like rewinder um All right, so actually let's think of it this way. If I'm playing like the deal damage to myself demons. I play a wrath weaver I played this instead of Soul Rewinder. Let's just assume. I'm assuming you don't take this and Soul Rewinder because they both do kind of the same thing. You play Tychondrius. You play Malchazar. You play the Imp. That's five minions. You probably play Bran and then you play like a Battlecry rotational type thing. So really all this does is replace the Wrath Weaver. But where it's better than Wrathweaver is you could get tempo off of it with the tavern spells. But what tavern spells like are tavern spells actually that game breaking that you'd rather have this than them? I don't think so. It seems okay to take if like you're tr playing demons and you didn't find rewinder to take this and potentially use it to like tempo out a little bit. Um, I don't think you take it though if you already have a rewinder that's gotten going, and I don't see you playing this and rewinder, so that's kind of I don't see this. Um, Smolderwing Gunner, Tier Three Dragon, One Five. When you sell this, get a Two One Smolderwing with Battlecry. Give a Demon or a Dragon plus. Kind of interesting that they made this on Tier Three. Most of the like sell to get stuff is a Tier Two card, so I'm wondering why they didn't just make it like a like a one like three or a one four kind of thing and put it on two right like most of the tavern tier twos are like the sell to get something Yeah, I honestly, I just don't see this being good unless it's on two. Um, Parch Wanderer, tier two Murloc. Battle Cry, give a Murloc two, three, and talk. This is actually a really good two drop to find. Like, especially if you sell a Tad and get this. Like, it reminds me of the dragon that's like the two, two buff. This is kind of like a two, three buff. Like, it's a lot of tempo if you have a, a Murloc. Um, and what you could do even on like two. Like on turn three, you buy this buff, you know, one of your one drop Murlocs, sell it, and play it another two drop. It's a lot of tempo. Actually, it feels like a really good way to solidify Murlocs on Tavern Tier 2 and get into them earlier. Slippery Slider, Tier 4 Naga. 4 or 5 Spellcrafts refresh the tavern with two extra tavern spells that cost one less. So I see you like trying to do this in like a Lord of Games comp. But Lord Games kind of sucks. Like, it's just really slow. So I don't see it being good, not because it's a bad card, but just, like, it's too slow compared to... Like, the comp just doesn't seem good yet. Unless there's a, a random tavern spell. So it's kind of slow. You can probably see this as getting one, maybe two tavern spells a turn. Um, You don't keep this in the late game. Um, How's... I'm assuming the 7 carries over from turn to 2 turn that if you like triple a 3 a 2 drop into this you probably take it it just feels really slow and in the early game like you're all about trying to get a board so you figure like it's going to take 2 turns to get that first one I it seems bad I'll be honest uh all right, and then a duo's only. All right, so card pool changes. 
Barons is out, which makes uh Bran a little bit harder. Wait, why are all these like the golden ones? Um, no ban Barons. Con no one was playing that. Thorn Captain's out. Uh, that's actually kind of kind of interesting. Thorn Captain was a really good one drop. Um, it was like a solid one you could take every time. Keyboard Igniter. Um. Makes demons a little like demons not having a tempo three is a little bit bad, but like you weren't taking that too too often. Seer out, don't Seer's bad. Spellbound seafarers out actually probably hurts a lot because like you would want this in the Nala comp. Nala portrait with this would have been like really good. So I see that comp kinda hurting. Scarlet Skull being out. Did they give a They didn't even put a Tavern two two undead in, right? That shows that really hurts the ability to play undead early, um, because now the like um, the spider is the only like good one to play. Uh, Xylobones, no one was playing Xylobones. No one was playing Burrower. Leapfrogger, we saw this come in. Rip, rip, Leapfrogger, and then kind of grandmother. No one cares. Uh, so we got some returning. Brendel. Not it's not a, a game breaking by anything. It's okay. Like you if you triple into it you're happy because you get econ. But that's about it. Um uh Witch Wing Nest Matron. This one's actually pretty good. You can reasonably get one to two procs. You like you figure you're getting a battle cry minion every turn. Like it's not bad. You can use it to stabilize. T Master T Master actually had a couple comps where you would like do Bran and just like play like essentially like infinite pirates with it um but in, not instead of like you would do like tethys and then two like cleave or divine shield type minions and just buff those and then play like finish with tech every turn um and it, it's a pretty good like card uh that way um was it always two two i feel like it was three three back in the day We'll see, but it's like an okay six drop. You can kind of play around it. It's not like great though. Okay, so this is what they're bringing. They're bringing back Corpse Refiner. Um, this minion sells for two more gold. So this minion was always like not amazing, just because it was so slow. Like you would take it if you had to, but uh, the 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 real issue with it is one, you can never triple it because you actually like lose gold if you triple it. Um. But, like, you, if you get it on turn 3, it's fine, because, like, it will econ itself. Um, but the issue is, just, like, you lose so much tempo playing it. Like, it has one drop stats. Disco Shuffler, Trigger Leader of Friendly Minions, Battlecry, or Discover a Battlecry Minion. Uh, so this one made some really disgusting um, combos with, where you would trigger the Battlecry. So, like, you could trigger the... Um, one dragon that gives you the the uh, whelps or whatever, um, and just go infinite that way, especially with a brand like because it trick like you pretty much always want to do the trigger a battle cry because you're playing this in brand comps, um, so as this one's an interesting one to add back. It's a good like cycle spot. Peckish Feldrake being back is uh pretty good for um, this was always like a go to with um, the Murkai. You could use this and Murkai to do the battle cry at the end of the turn, and then you're doing like shot bluffing. Like, that's one of my favorite ways. And then with Shutterwalk, like, you get to eat three minions. So, this probably helps the um, shop consume dragon uh, builds a little bit. Uh, Carbonic Copy. So, summit, start a combat. So, if I remember, this is the golden one. These are all the golden ones, even though they're not golden. Um, it only summons one minion. You know it's kind of interesting with this. If you take the carbonic copy with promo portrait. So let's say you have golden. If you have golden carbon, it summons two copies. You double the star to comment. So you summon actually four copies. There might be a, some type of build there where you just put like play me like brand some tech in this and only buff this and you get like five of it there might be something there uh annoyo troop taunt divine shield death rattle seven three 
what a tavern tier is this? This seems bad though. <laughs> I'm assuming this is like. I don't know what tavern tier this is, but it just seems bad. <laughs> well, I don't know. I, I can't read this just because I don't know where it is. They say it's returning to the pool, and I'll be honest, I didn't play when this was ever in, so I'm not really sure. Um, salty looter. Whenever you play a pirate game, plus two, plus two. So it's a four, five on three. It's an okay, like APM pirate card. Um, when I would play it back in the day, like you would play this in your APM pirates as just like a solid menu that you didn't have to buff because it kind of buffed itself. Um, oh yeah, there's that. Um, Agam Thorn Curse. After a blood gem is played. And the, oh, this was like the blood gem on friendly minions of each type. So like you couldn't play this in a quill board comp. The hardest thing with this is like you can't really have blood gem generation in this, right? So that's where this always struggled. So the only thing I can see is you played that in a surveyor portrait build. And you're getting like extra procs that way. That's the only thing I can cook up right now. Colossus of the Sun, Divine Shield, Reborn. So the only thing this one's good for is it gets like four hits, right? Four hits instead of most minions, which get like two with their uh, death row. But honestly, I can't see. Like, it's not game changing for for um, Undead. Mechanized Horse is back, which means Goldrin's back. Or this is also good in Deflecto Comps. So there's that. Mana Saber's back, but Mana Saber without Leapers is meh. Bird Buddy, Avenge 1, give your beast, plus 2. Oh, so it's a plus 1, plus 1, 2, 4. The, if I remember, this one just always felt really slow. Um, Like, it doesn't even help stabilize you that much, but... Like, if you're playing Beasts, it's okay. You can't, like, I guess with Undead Beast, you might be doing it, but, I don't know, it's an okay card, it's not, it, it's pretty bad, like, you only take this if you're playing, like, a Mana Saber, or, like, Goose Comp. <laughs> uh, Dreamers of Brace being removed, I'll be honest, Dreamers and Brace normally wasn't too, too amazing, um, but, Unmass Identity back, um, so this was always interesting with, like, Snake Eyes. Because what you do is, like, you would get kind of rushed to 5 with Snake Eyes, wait until you roll, like, a 5 or a 6, buy this for 3, and you essentially got, like, 2 gold for free, and potentially got, like, especially when it, like, got to the turns where, like, you probably weren't going to be able to roll again. Like, this was kind of a way to save your game. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. I never really saw this one as that, that game changing. Um, it, where it's kind of good, I guess, is with, like, Tempo Heroes. That's really about it. Hummingbird, 04, start of combat, your beast set plus to attack this turn. Wait, what is it? Right now it's just like a generic, your beast set to attack, right? So this makes it so summons aren't as good. Does it apply to summons? I think so. I think that it's, how is this even really a change? Oh, you know what it is, it is, if it dies, it still has the effect. That's actually really big for it. Hummingbird's like probably good if that's actually how it reads, where it has the effect even if it dies now. Um, that seems good. Uh, salty. Oh wait, so salty leader is not what we saw before. Has plus one plus one for each pirate you've summoned this game. All right, so this is actually kind of interesting. It seems like they want this to be in the flag bearer comp because you summon a lot of pirates in that comp. But the issue with the flag bearer comp is like you don't really have room for this because you're like playing either the flag bearer or the corpse guy. Um So the other option is you play this in like APM pirates, where like if you're playing this in APM pirates, like this kind of just does the equivalent of the Frostling Elemental, but it's worse than Frostling Elemental. So it's, honestly, I think it's bad. <laughs> um, Agron Thorcor, so, okay, so they actually changed it. After a Blood Gem is played on this, play a Blood Gem on a different phone. Okay, so this is actually the comp then. You do a gem, 
in the uh, Skurveyor portrait in like a menagerie comp. After buffing your gems, like that's pretty good, right? Because you're essentially playing a gem on this. You're essentially getting like a gem on everything that way. And you're getting six gems every turn that way. So that's that's in my opinion. That's pretty good. Um, assuming you've buffed your gems already. That's actually that seems alright. Um and then we already looked at Colossus. Colossus isn't that game break. So here's kind of the the what I see as being new comp. So I can see a gem being played in a menagerie comp uh with the Skurveyor portrait. Um Murlocs have a little bit of an early game buff. Um anything else that's like the other than the other things that are like Feldrake's a pretty good find as like something new. And then Team Master builds will be a thing. Like in a like double cleave or a divine shield type comp and then play Bran and then just finish every turn with like a Bramble Witch or something some type of tech unit, whatever you want to be your tech. So like the comp with this is Bran Team Master two. Tethys three two cleaves or divine shields. Uh which makes a three four. And then you get three tech units every turn. Um, I mean, that, that seems so decent, right? I mean, the way I, like, I really like Team Master, because it's my favorite way to play comps, is where you think of it as, like, a four minion core, where this is three minions. So regardless, this is three minions, Team Master, and Brand, right? Because you want to go, like, infinite with it. Um, the issue with it is, is there a way to get friendly uh, get minions with no type easily this is definitely a little bit worse without barons because barons would have been really good with this to like have a cycle but team master comps might be a thing we'll see um yeah i don't see anything else being game breaking uh for the trinkets um nala portrait good Manipulator, you'll take if you're desperate. Surveyor, if your gems are buffed, you take it. Flag bearer, if you're playing Death Rail Pirates already, like it's a good solidification. I, there's probably something I'm missing with Nagas, but they look like they suck. Primal Fin Portrait, APM comps, you're going to get um, Arthritis. You get even more Arthritis this way. Mechadrexus just seems worse than Freeze Magnet, but there's that. Surprise Elemental... This is doing a lot of work. If this is something like you get one every two turns or something like that, like then it's broken. If you can get more than one a turn because it's like proc, there's like a percent chance of like every time you play a minion and it's like, you know, off of uh every time you play a card or something like that, then it's okay. Um, I can also see this doing a lot of like griefing cards. Um, you know, like something that sucks right now is with like Celemental. You'll try like play elemental just and like accidentally triple stuff with surprise elemental. So there's that. Uh, promo portrait. Uh, it's decent. It might be good for just stabilizing with dragons, but my biggest issue with it is if you're not playing keychain, like why are you playing tra dragons? Sagaris, so, if you're playing the comp, it's okay. If you're not, don't take it. Uh, duos, 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 duos. Mr. Cube seems bad. Birdling Claw, you take if you're desperate. Bartendertron seems broken. Reflective Pendant seems bad. It seems okay in combo comps. That's about it. Take a sticker looks broken unless I was looking at the wrong tier. Bleeding Heart's okay if you already have a lot of summons. I'm also assuming the Avenge 6 carries over every turn. If not, it's definitely worse. Um, Marine Signet seems bad. Fergilmancer seems okay in Elemental Murloc Lobbies. Um, Electromagnetic Device seems bad. Goose Portrait, I'm assuming, is bad. But there might be something I'm missing with Goose. And Deathly Phylactery seems actually broken in the whole catacomb crash of a comp. Like it's essentially a Titus as a lesser trinket there. I'm convinced this is actually like this and Bartendertron are actually like probably the biggest breaking ones. And like the catacomb crasher comp is already decent. Having a lesser trinket that's essentially Titus 
is absolutely broken for it, right? That, that's my thoughts. All right. This is long enough. I ranted long enough. See y'all.